So I've been troubleshooting this issue that a lot of people who self-host their own email in current year are facing, and that is not being able to send email to certain big tech email services, mainly Microsoft and Apple's mail services, despite everything on my end with my email being configured correctly. Uh, and sometimes my base.win emails also land in the spam folders of like Gmail or Yahoo, but that's not such a big deal compared to the bounce backs that I get with Apple and Microsoft because those stop the end user from getting my mail altogether. Now, when you're troubleshooting email, a pretty typical thing to do is to send test emails to accounts that you control, especially if you don't just get a bounce back right away so that you can see if the email is actually being received and you can see if it's going into spam or getting flagged in some other way. Uh, and so I have testing accounts to do that with most of the major email providers. And I even have accounts with so-called private email services like ProtonMail and Tutanota. But I ran into a problem with iCloud because even though you can set up an iCloud account in your browser on any OS you want, you don't get the option to create that at iCloud.com email address unless you use your Apple ID on an Apple device, which is what brought me to OSX KVM. So this is a collection of scripts that allow you to create a Hackintosh virtual machine under KVM. And one of the interesting things that I noticed when I was reading through this readme file, uh, under the setting expectations right section, they mentioned that it is possible to have beyond native Apple hardware performance but that it does require work, patience, and a bit of luck, perhaps. Um, now, I'm not going to be really improving the performance of this VM in this video, because I literally just need to like run one app um, and do a couple other things that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But if you do, like if you actually need to daily drive a Mac to run some kind of software and you're thinking of spending money on Apple's really, really overpriced hardware, this might be a way to get around that, especially if you're gonna use it on a desktop because, I mean, all of Apple's hardware is overpriced, but that's especially true when it comes to their desktops. I mean, you can build a much more powerful Hackintosh desktop for cheaper than like a fully built one that you would get at the Apple store. But anyway, let's go ahead and start getting into the setup of this Hackintosh. Um, so of course, you're gonna wanna make sure you have QEMU and those other packages installed, um, and then clone the repo and run this uh, mod probe and user mod commands to make sure that you have everything set up to run virtual machines. If you've been using KVM already, then you could pretty much just skip this beginning part. Um, so, when you're inside of the folder that you downloaded everything to, you want to run this fetch macOS v2.py um, installer. And I'm just going to install the recommended uh, Ventura OS. And this should finish pretty quickly. All right, and now I'm gonna convert the base system to an image file. Uh, and you gotta make sure you have DMG to IMG installed to do that. All right, so that's finished. And one other thing I'm gonna do, so this is where I'm gonna deviate a little bit from just the instructions that are written in the GitHub repo. I'm going to change the Mac address of this Mac VM. Um, and the reason for that, I'll, I'll explain more later, but this is basically so that um, I can make this look to Apple servers like a unique uh, machine because you can't sign in with the same Apple ID, you know, multiple Apple IDs or too many at least on one machine or one device. Uh, so we got that Mac address saved. And 
Now I'm going to just go ahead and launch Open Core Boot um, or to run it from the uh, command line or, oh, actually, I'm forgetting some steps. I'm forgetting to create the, um, the image. So I'll just do that real quick. Okay, now I can boot it. Okay, so I'm gonna go through a, um, pretty much just go through a Mac OS installation. So I'll, I'll probably end up skipping through this part a bit. All right, so when you finish installing Mac OS, uh, you're gonna wanna boot from the Mac disk or whatever you name the partition that you installed Mac OS to. And this is gonna actually boot us up into the OS so that I can show you the issue that we have with Apple IDs and show you how to fix it. Uh, and I've already set up my user account and installed some of the software we're gonna need just to save time, but I'll make sure to show you guys where to get it. Uh, so uh, if we go to, well, first let's go to about this Mac. So this is the serial number that this Mac has right now. And I believe it's the same for just everyone that installs um, OS X KVM. But if you try to sign in with your Apple ID or if you try to create an Apple ID, um, usually you'll either get an error that says too many Apple IDs have been created from this Mac, which is like pretty straightforward, right? Obviously that's the issue. Uh, or sometimes you'll get a more cryptic error message uh, if you either try to sign in with an existing Apple ID uh, or sometimes this happens where it just kind of loads for a little while and then the verification failed uh, message pops up. Um, and as far as I know, all these errors are just tied to the same issue, which is too many Apple IDs are associated with uh, this serial number. So... To get around that, we're gonna to have to change the serial number of this Mac uh, and some other values. And we can do that with gen SM BIOS, um, which you can get from GitHub here. And we're also gonna use plist or plist edit pro. Um, and we don't actually need the pro version. You don't need to buy anything. You could just use the free trial. And really this is just for um, verifying the changes that we're gonna make with um, Gen SM BIOS. I guess you could also just use like any old text or JSON editor to do it. Um, but anyway, let's get started with installing this. Um, I didn't install this program, I just installed Git, which you could do from the Mac just by trying to run a uh, git command and it'll prompt you to install git. All right, and then we're gonna chmod gen sm bios command. And let me actually make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. All right, so um, before we start running the software, we need to go get our plist file. So um, actually, let me do this in in the command prompt. So diskutil list, and we want, um, I think it's partition one on dev disk zero. Yeah, so this one here, EFI, that's on disk zero. So we're gonna go ahead and create a directory to mount it in volumes EFI. You gotta do it as root. And then sudo mount t ms dos dev disk. 0s1, volumes, EFI. All right, and 
now we can go into Finder and we can um, drill down into the EFI OC folder. And this is the file we want right here, config.plist. Um, so this pretty much contains like the serial number uh, of this Mac and a couple other values. Values that uniquely identify it. So that's pretty much the goal here in order to um, fool Apple's system into thinking that this is a new Mac from the store. We just have to generate uh, new serial numbers and stuff that aren't already in the system. Uh, so let's switch back to the terminal and I'll just minimize this. <laughs> yeah, it's um, another thing you might want to do is turn off like the, the animation and stuff like that because that um, really lags it a lot unless you go through the optimizations for the VM. Uh, so let's do genSMBIOS.command. All right, so first thing is we want to install Mac Serial. So you run option one first. And then we're going to select our config.plist file. And you want to use the one that you just copied to the desktop. Um, I don't think you want to copy it directly from EFI because uh, it might not edit it correctly. Maybe you could run this as root to get around that. Um, not exactly sure because I've just been doing it this way. Uh, and then, so if we list the current one, so this is the serial number that we have right now, and we're just gonna copy this model info so that we can paste it back in. Uh, Cause you can generate different serial numbers for different kinds of Macs uh, using this tool. Um, and then yeah, we wanna do option three to generate SMBIOS. And paste that in, iMac Pro 1.1. So this is the new serial number that it's created. And um, now we're going to quit out of this and then just verify with our plist editor that, um, that the serial number was changed. And we're also gonna check it against Apple's um, warranty checker just to make sure that it really is a unique serial because I guess it is possible to generate existing serial numbers with this as well, which you don't want to do because <laughs> they could have the same problem that, um, that our current one has. All right, so you want to drill down into platform info, generic, and here's our system serial number. So we'll just copy that real quick. And um, CQHX87. Pretty sure it's different than what we got now. Yep. All right. So we'll go back into Firefox and look up the Apple warranty check. All right, I'll paste in the serial number. And it looks like this might be uh, one that's already in use. Let me just see if I get the same thing with this serial number. Yeah, so it looks like I might actually have to run this again. So yeah, very important to make sure you're getting a new, um, well, a new, like, as in one that's not in uh, Apple system. So let's just go through this again. All right, and generate SMBIOS again. And it's a 
iMac 1.1. One, one. Um, okay, I typed that wrong. Let me just list this again and copy it. Oh yeah, iMac Pro 1.1. One, one. Okay, and let me check this against Apple before I close out of this program. Okay, so this is what we're looking for, where they say, please enter a valid serial number. So that means that this has not been assigned to a Mac yet. Um, so there's no, and, and that way we know that there's not gonna be any Apple IDs associated with it either. Um, so, let's see, hopefully I didn't create any conflicts there by having both of those open at the same time. Uh, we will find out in a minute. Okay, quit out of that. And let me just verify this. All right, platform info, generic, serial number, H9HX87. Okay, so we've got the good serial number applied now. And now we can go ahead and put this back into OC. So we're gonna delete this one here. And replace it with this config.plist or plist, whatever it's called. Um, we're done with this here. So we'll just close everything now. Oh. Let me also unmount the uh, EFI partition. All right, so now we should be able to reboot. And have that updated serial number when we go to look at about this Mac. Boot from Mac disk again. We go into system settings. Sign in or create an Apple ID. And so now we're getting the option, you know, first part of creating the Apple ID is to enter your birth date. Uh, so there you go. And same thing if you were to, if you already have an Apple ID and you just want to sign in here to um, make it a full and complete Apple ID or um, basically what I did was I went into the mail app and then just signed in through here. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's how to both set up a basic Hackintosh with KVM and to change your serial number so that you can actually use all the full features with the Apple ID. If you enjoyed this video, like it and share it to hack the algorithm, and check out my website, base.win, where you can get awesome merch and accessories for your phone or computer, 10% discount when using Monero XMR, and try not to use an iCloud or Outlook email if you want to get shipping updates because yeah, they're still being very rude to my base.win domain um, until I'm able to fix it or just set up mail forwarding with Gmail. But 
You guys have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.